Welcome to the section using Node.js and Socket.io. This is the first section of three that will focus on Socket.io. We will cover what Socket.io is, how to interact with multiple browsers, how to broadcast messages, and how to use the disconnect event. Now in this video, we will cover the basics of Socket.io. Just like the other sections, this video will be mostly explanatory over actual code, but it does set up the rest of the videos. In this video, we will cover what Socket.io is, install it, and then use it. So let's get started. So let's start at the beginning. What is Socket.io? In the most basic terms, Socket.io allows real-time communication between a server and the browser. The value that Socket.io has is that it makes this incredibly easy. So how does this work? Conventionally, web servers are a pull request-based system. This means that the web server responds to a request made by a browser. The web server does not send an update or a new page to the browser. It is all initiated by the browser, or technically any HTTP client, which the browser is. So let's say we have a page that has football scores. Now the viewer can take that to mean American football or what Americans call soccer. A client requests a page and we can return the score as of that time. What happens when there's another score? In some fashion, that page must make another request. Now with Socket.io and other libraries as well, we can send the update to the page as it happens. Behind the scenes, Socket.io uses a technology called WebSockets. This is fairly new and allows a browser to create an open connection between the browser and the server. Now we will not go into the details of how this works as Socket.io hides this complexity. It is great knowledge to have, but is outside the scope of this video, and, and we can use Socket.io to its fullest potential without that knowledge. In addition to this, Socket.io uses a few other methods to create the connection. Now, in these videos, we'll focus on WebSockets, but it's important to know that other methods are used because it can be important in specific situations. So let's go ahead and use Socket.io right now. So let's open up section 1.1 and take a look at the code. The first thing we'll look at is a package.json. As you can see, we have Express version 4.14. We've installed socket.io at version 1.5.1. Again, NPM makes this so easy, so that's really easy to make sure everyone's using the same version. Now let's look at index.js. First thing we need to do is get a reference to Express and socket.io. Then we create the app through Express. Then we get a server by listening immediately. Then we take this server instance and then we pass it into Socket.io and we get back a Socket.io server. So we do that so that Socket.io can do what needs to be done with setting up web sockets and the connections. So next, we'll use the static helper here to serve any pages in static, and then we will create an index.html. Next, we take that IO object and we say on the connection event, remember that's a listener, we will then get a socket inside of that. So at this point, that socket is now a connection from the server straight to the browser. Now here, we're just gonna log that a socket is open, and then we're gonna log out the socket object. Now let's take a look at index.html. So here it's pretty simple. Pretty much all we are doing is asking to load some JavaScript to connect with Socket.io. Now we do not need to add a path for this on the server as a Socket.io server object takes care of setting this up for us and serving this JavaScript file. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. And then we will load this up in a browser. So now if we come down to the console, we will actually make our first connection. Because as of right now, we have not created a WebSocket connection or really any real-time connection. All we've done is ask for the index.html page. We've done simple HTTP. Now, there's an IO object that the socket IO JavaScript creates. And if we call that without any parameters, it will connect to the server. 
Now it does this by trying to connect to the server that served the page. For here, that is fine because that is exactly where we want it to connect. So we'll run this. And then as you can see, we get an object back. So this is our socket connection on the client side. So now let's take a look on the server side. And here's the server side. So here's the socket object. And if we go up and take a look at this object, it echoed out a lot here. We see that a socket is now open. So that's our console log. And then here's our socket that we wanted to output. So as we can see, this is actually a connection from the client to the server. Now we can use this to start sending messages to the client in real time. In this video, we have covered what Socket IO is, and most importantly, why we would want to use Socket IO. And the answer to this is that Socket IO easily allows us to create real time communication between the server and the client. Then we just created the very simplest application we can with Socket IO.